This is Extra Paycheck Podcast, episode number 90. You're listening to Extra Paycheck Podcast, where you will learn how to build and grow your own successful online business. Now, here's your host, Alex Soul. Welcome to yet another episode of the Extra Paycheck Podcast. This is episode number 90, and today's special guest is Selena Apia from thriftdiving.com. In today's episode, Selena is not only going to share strategies of how she built her blog and how to grow a blog, but also she will be sharing some very unique and interesting ways to monetize that blog so you could finally make money out of it. Enjoy today's episode. Hi, Serena, and welcome to the Extra Paycheck Podcast. Thank you, Alex. I'm very happy to be here. Please tell us a little bit more about yourself and what is that you do as a business? Well, I am a blogger and uh, I'm over at a site called thriftdiving.com. So it's all about inspiring people to decorate their home on a budget, anything that you can learn how to do yourself in order to decorate your home, maintain it, make it look great. We, we try to do everything as much as we can ourselves. So it's all about the home decorating and just, you know, sort of flexing your creative muscle. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. And Serena, Thank you. Uh, how did you get started, I guess? What what was the idea behind it? Because, you know, uh, people, there's a lot of people who blog and a lot of people, they blog for uh, their own reasons, I would say. They, would, they start for their own reasons, one of them being money. A lot of people, right. they start a blog with a unique and only reason to make money out of it. And as we all know, most of these people fail because it's kind of a wrong approach to go. Um, I think money mm -hmm. is a byproduct of a good blog, but you have to, uh, it's, it shouldn't be the motivation at the very beginning, at least. So exactly. Uh, yeah. Please tell me how, how did you get the idea of starting a blog actually on that very subject and why? Well, you know, I, in order for me to tell you that I have to give you a little bit of background information. Sure. So I have always loved writing. I've always loved being creative. And uh, when I was a teenager, and I'm going to start that far ago because it's, it's kind of important. So many readers probably or many listeners probably have never heard of a book series. It was called Sweet Valley Twins. You probably don't know because you're male and you're not a teenage girl. <laughs> but when I, was a, when I was a young girl, there was a character in the book and she loved to write in, you know, those black and white composition books. Mm -hmm. She would always journal. And so I thought, well, hey, I'm 15 years old. I'd love to start writing. And I just became, I, I loved journaling. I loved documenting kind of like my life. Of course, back then it was all about boys and school. Well, I continued on through high school, through college. And sh sometime after college, I had uh, become pregnant with my first son. And it was right around the time, at this point, it was around 2005. And everybody had been talking about blogs, you know, all of the friends of mine, we were all talking about going online and doing these uh, parenting mom blogs. So I said, yeah, I'm going to start a free blog with Google and I'll just take all of my journals that I've been doing with paper and pencil or paper and pen and I'll move it online. So I started journaling about what it was like to become a first time mom it, just my experiences of trying to raise this this little beautiful boy. And I continue with that. This was before, Alex, this was before I even knew that people were monetizing. Everything was password protected. Like I didn't want anyone but friends to even find out that it existed, right? It was like a journal. Yeah. But it wasn't until we bought our home in 2010 where I started finding, oh my gosh, people were, people were blogging about their house and projects they're doing. And we had just bought this older 1973 home that needed a lot of work. You know, wallpaper needed to come down, toilets needed to be replaced. And so I I sort of moved from this mommy blogger with a password protected, you know, blog spot, free blog, to uh, blogging about my home. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, and that was 2010, and it wasn't until 2012 when I started getting an inkling from other, you know, DIY bloggers that, hey, here's how you can make money with this. And I remember thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I've been doing this for how many years? Like many years. And I never even knew that people were making money with it. So I decided that very particular day when I saw that email, I was going to change my blog name. At the time, it was 
like rehab to fab.blogspot.com. I mean, something crazy. Yeah. And I said, I love thrift stores. I've been decorating everything in my home from thrift stores because we couldn't afford to buy anything new. I'm going to call my blog thrift diving. Everyone's heard of dumpster diving. So I'm going to call it thrift diving. And it started out as this adventure of, Hey, look what I found at the thrift store. You know, I found furniture for my bedroom or, you know, just sharing with, with people what I found. And then I started learning how to paint it, how to strip it, make it look great. And so it's, it's sort of evolved into this journey of this home that we bought and how we are transforming it from this old 1973 home to something that's more updated, more modern. And then, it, you know, you still have uh, some element of, of bringing in the family every now and then, you know, it's not a mom blog at all, but it's, it's, you know, you'll see pictures of my kids on there. And, and so it's just, it's evolved. It's taken years. It's been about 11 or 12 years now and for it to get to this point, but it's, it's exciting. And that's why it's kind of a long story, but it's, you know, it's not like I just woke up one day and said, Hey, I want to make money with this blog. And I'm just going to start a blog and see how much money I can make for it. Because I agree with you. I think if that's your motivation, people can tell. And, you know, that's that's kind of not where my heart is. My heart is inspiring other people to transfer their home or transform their home as well without having to spend a lot of money and just being able to be creative. So sorry, sorry for the long explanation, but <laughs> no, that's that's perfect. Thanks. It started years ago. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thanks for sharing that. And Serena, sure. I, I have to admit something here. Uh, when I tell people to start a, start a blog when I help people choose a mm -hmm. niche or subject for their blog. I usually tell people to stay away from do-it-yourself um, industry in really? general. Yeah, well, because in my understanding, and this is when I heard of you and your story, and I was like, hmm, maybe I'm wrong here, and <laughs> she would be a perfect person to explain how that works. Because in my opinion, how it's been uh, for most mm -hmm. of the time, when it's something DIY, in my opinion, once again, uh, that's mm -hmm. when people really want to save money and do it themselves. So yes. they don't want to buy stuff. They don't want to pay for anything. Mm -hmm. They don't. Um, you understand what I'm going with this, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> but, oh, yes. But this is a different territory a little bit because right now. Um, okay, I'll go back a little bit as well. At some point, sure. I, I wanted to start a website. I actually registered a domain name and I wrote a few articles, but I gave up on mm -hmm. it. It was called uh, Cigar Box Guitars. I don't know if you've heard of mm -hmm. that. No, never heard uh, of it. So it's a musical instrument, basically, which is DIY. It's uh, mm -hmm. You take a old wooden cigar box and you turn mm -hmm. that into a guitar of sorts. Oh, that sounds cool. Uh, yeah, it's it's a cool project. But what I've noticed after starting that blog, that there's like a few really big forums and communities where people hang out and mm -hmm. don't even dare trying to sell something to those people <laughs> because they make it themselves. They don't, they will never buy anything. Right, right. And this is when it hit me like, well, okay, DIY, it's people who don't want to spend money on anything which I guess is, well, first of all, wrong because you know, whatever you're doing, you'll have to buy parts for it or right, materials, exactly. first of all. But in your case, uh, maybe you could share how exactly at this point you're monetizing your your blog and where the money is coming from since it sure. is in mostly DIY uh, niche. Right. Well, first, let me let me say that I I slightly agree with you. Um, it's not impossible to make money in this niche, but... I do agree with you that when you have a blog such as a DIY blog or something crafty, we can be kind of cheap. We really can because we, you know, we don't want to pay thousands of dollars. I mean, that's the whole premise of our blog. You know, why pay for, um, you know, something expensive when you can make it yourself, but you hit on a good point. There are parts that you need in order to make these things. You know, it's it's really funny. It's sort of when you think of someone who loves sewing clothes, for example. Like if you were to ask someone, well, why do you sew clothes? You know, you might be thinking, well, you do it just because you want to save money. No, if, if you've ever bought fabric before, you know how expensive fabric is, mm -hmm. right? You can go and buy a pair of pants for probably fifty dollars versus paying a hundred to sew them yourselves. So. Um, and, and what I had done with my audience 
maybe about a year, maybe a little more than a year ago, is I really wanted to try to find out, are they doing this just to save money or is it because they really just like to be creative? And I think what I found from that is is there was a lot more people that said they were doing this because they like being creative, not necessarily to save money. I mean, we all enjoy saving money, but it seemed like there was a lot more people, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it seemed like there was a lot more people that responded you know, I do this because I love to be creative versus like, this is strictly for budget reasons. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, so that kind of gave me a clue that people will buy things. People do have to buy the materials and sometimes the materials are not cheap. Where I make money is with the companies that sponsor me for the things that require people to buy in order to make these things. So for example, uh, let's take paint, for example, you know, if you're at a thrift store and you find an old desk and you want to make it over, well, that's great. You don't have to go out and spend 300 400 on a new desk, but what are you going to use to paint it with? Oh, introduce the paint company. So there are companies, uh, one company in particular that I work with uh, on several projects, and I do maybe one furniture makeover every two months for them, and they will pay me to do a video and a blog post. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing what I normally would do. You know, like, hey, I've got this desk that I'm making over. I found it from the thrift store for $40. Here's the brand of paint that I'm using. Here's why I like the paint. Here's how you use the paint. Here's the paint. Here's the link to go buy the paint. And, you know, the price point that the paint is at, it can be a little expensive. But again, if it's a product that people see me using and they like it and I'm being truthful, which I always am when I'm promoting anything on my blog, they're going to buy the paint. And so where... For DIYers, a lot of times where money comes from are those companies that want to sell their product to our audience. Um, you know, one company that I that I work with exclusively, you know, I've started to use power tools. And this is something that when I first started my blog, I didn't feature any power tools because I didn't know how to use them. Yeah. I always wanted to learn, but I didn't know how to use them. And so a lot of what I did was just, you know, refinishing furniture, maybe just painting it. Well, then I started adding legs to furniture or maybe cutting off this part and reusing it and going into a different direction of repurposing and not just uh, refinishing furniture. And I now have a partnership with Ryobi Power Tools. And so I'll work with them every month. I'll either do a project for them or I'll do a post with um, giveaways so that my readers can win you know, $300 worth of power tools. So even though we're doing it ourselves, what are they going to use? They're going to use the power tools in order to get the job done. Mm -hmm. So it is selling, but it's not coming from me. I'm selling myself to the brands that I work with, and then they're using me to sell their products to the, to my audience. Um, and what you see a lot of DIY or blog, a lot of, well, I can't say a lot, but it seems like a lot. You know, we've got a skill set. We know how to use Pinterest. We know how to work with brands. And you see a lot of these bloggers turning into how to blog DIY bloggers. So, you know, you know what a lot of uh, marketers are doing. They're pushing courses. They're pushing eBooks. Yeah. A lot of DIY bloggers have started to do that too. Um, and to be honest with you, it makes a lot of us other DIYers who aren't doing it a little upset sometimes because it, it's, we know that we need things to sell, but sometimes it comes off as being a little too, how can I say it? Um, where everybody wants to be an expert mm -hmm. and, you know, we DIYers, it's, it's a little different because it's, you know, like coming from a different niche where your niche is how to blog or how to make money blogging. We understand your goal is to sell things, but you know, as DIY bloggers, a lot of times we feel like we're this special tribe that, you know, we, we got into it because we love it and we want to inspire people and we want to be creative. And the minute we see someone stepping outside of that and saying, Hey, I've got this $300 course. We're like, Oh my gosh, she's a sellout. How dare she do that? You know, and <laughs> really she's just making money. She's selling her knowledge. Um, so there are ways to do it, but it's a little different for this niche. And sometimes there can be some backlash when you have this DIY blogger who used to post all these projects and inspirational things, but suddenly now they're in the how to make money blogging niche. 
Um, it's like, it's kind of taboo. It's kind of taboo when, when you move, when you start, uh, changing niches, because we're, we're very protective of our, you know, of our mission, you know, we're, we're all about inspiring people and being creative and no, she didn't. How dare she go over there and start blogging about how she blogs, (laughs) but there's money to be made there. For sure. Yeah, yeah, I understand. And uh, thanks for sharing this, Serena. And I've noticed uh, what you just mentioned about yourself and your your brand. Um, mm-hmm. I've noticed a similar trend with uh, travel bloggers. A lot of mm-hmm. them, instead of going the usual route, let's say, which which I took and most other people take, which is uh, affiliate marketing. Right. Uh, so you work directly with like Amazon or some marketplace where you right. don't really build a relationship with a brand. Uh, Mm -hmm. that you're promoting rather than with the marketplace, which allows you to promote whatever. And some other people are going into uh, selling ads, uh, ad space on their blogs and so on. However, you are talking about uh, about partnerships and uh, sponsorships, which, Mm -hmm. as I just mentioned, is great for travel bloggers as well and vloggers because it might be a little bit harder to sell anything else but, you know, show off the experience, your knowledge for right, free and right. then, you know, get, get a sponsorship from a company. So right. uh, in, in your experience so far, what does it take to get that kind of partnership, to get that sponsorship? Because let's admit it, a big company is not going to even look at a blogger who's just starting, who doesn't have an audience, who doesn't have right. any kind of proven numbers. So maybe you could share right. What is what? What kind of views do you get per month, or how big your audience is, or like how exactly did your partners measure that it's worth it for them to to sponsor mm-hmm. you and to have you promote their products? Uh, you know. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, I'll explain to you two relationships. I mean, I've already mentioned both of them, uh, Ryobi, and there's another company called Beyond Paint that I work with, and. With Ryobi, you know, it, it's it's kind of funny. Well, I went to uh, several years ago, and this was maybe about three years ago, I went to a blogging conference. And I really recommend that for anyone that is starting a blog, find your niche and go to those conferences. Because a lot of times those sponsors are there. You know, they're there uh, sponsoring the blogging conference and you know, whether you're going up to them, you're starting a conversation, you've got something in common, you know, it's really kind of building those, those relationships face to face. Well, several years ago, I went to, uh, we've got a big conference every year that takes place in Atlanta. It's called the Haven Conference. And this was my first time at Haven. And I just remember nobody was on the dance floor. Nobody wanted to dance. And I was out there just dancing. I was having a good time. This was my first blogging conference away from home, no kids, no husband. I was going to go out there and have a good time. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, I think Ryobi remembered me from that, from that conference. You know, they were, they were like, Oh yeah, you were the girl on the dance floor getting it on. I was like, yes, yes, that was me. So I, I was kind of memorable. Um, so, and it was a relationship that built slowly over time. They've got a site called Ryobi and it's, well, it's not in RyobiNation.com. It's like Ryobi Tools, um, RyobiTools.com slash nation. Uh, if you go to Ryobi's website, you'll see. But it first started off with them saying, hey, you know, we'll send you a power tool if you will submit a project to our – it's sort of like Pinterest, but it's not as robust. It's a community uh, where people can submit their projects and mm-hmm. kind of show off. You know, it's just kind of a a great sharing place. If you do something, you want to show it off to the community, you can submit your project there. And they said, hey, you know, we'd like for you to to come on as like one of our celebrity bloggers and and submit a project. I said, "Okay, great. You'll give me a power tool. Great. I need power tools. Let's work together. And they really liked what I did. They liked the honesty that uh, they liked my projects, but they also liked the way in which I wrote and the way that when something happened, you know, a lot of times with DIY, sometimes bloggers can make it seem like, oh, this is my perfect little project and it was so easy. No, sometimes we run into challenges and I will actually put those challenges in the post and say, oh my gosh, I totally screwed up here, but let me tell you how I fixed it. And they really liked the way that I wrote with that honesty. Mm-hmm. And they they would come back to me and say, hey, okay, um, we really like what you did. We And this wasn't, a, again, over the course of a month or two. It happened over time. But they came back to me and said, you know, um, 
we would like to pay you for your contributions to our site. Are you interested? Well, yes, yes, I am interested. And then they ended up coming back to me and said, hey, we've got this uh, opportunity. We would like to work with you. We'd like to sponsor you every month and you submit this many projects to us and we'll pay you monthly. I said, yes, I'm interested in that. And they, and I've also worked with them to do various video projects where I would go down to their headquarters and film video tutorials. And they loved having me on set. I mean, they said that I was a natural. And so it, it was just this relationship that evolved over time because I kept producing and I kept, um, they just, they just liked me. They liked what I did with the other company beyond paint. It's really funny. This is actually a really good, um, uh, a really good story as well, because they sent me, I believe the first time that I worked with them, they just reached out via email and said, Hey, we've got this paint, would you promote it? And we'll give you like two free quarts of paint. And here's the thing, a lot of time, and I don't know if you had this conversation on your site, Alex, or with your, your readers, but you know, a lot of times bloggers don't want to work for free. And I totally understand that. I get that. A lot of times companies will say, hey, we'll give you a free paintbrush if you do a post for us. Yeah. Well, it's a lot of work to put together a project. <laughs> and, you know, I think it, it, there comes a time in our career where us bloggers, we say, you know what? I'm not working for free. This, you know, I'm going to get paid. You know, I want $500 per post or $800 or $1,000 per post. But beyond paint, if I had not accepted that paint, which that project that I did with that paint ended up being, and it still is, it's been three years now since I did this project, but that project that I did, I painted a China cabinet. It is my most popular project on my blog. Mm -hmm. And, and I went back to them and my blog is not huge. I, you know, I got hit by a Pinterest uh, update earlier in the year and my page view, page views dropped. Um, the highest I've been, it has been around 260,000 page views a month. Um, now I'm about half that 130 to 150 just depends on what's going on that month. Um, but that, that project is still my, my most popular project on my blog. And because they were a small company and they saw the amount of traffic that I was sending them, they ended up coming back to me again and say, Hey, we, we've got another, um, we'd love to work with you again. And I said, okay, great. Here's my fee. They said, okay, we'll pay that because I'd already proved to them that I could produce some, some results for them yeah. and it could become popular. And I've gone on to work with them in various ways. I, and you may have heard this, you had mentioned in the email when you contacted me that you had heard uh, an episode with learning with Leslie. Yeah. So, and I don't know if you had a chance to listen to this, but I had actually gone back to beyond paint and said, Hey, remember that project that we did together three years ago, I painted that China cabinet. I want to do, I want to re-promote that. And guess what? I'm going to get five other bloggers to re-promote that on their Facebook page. And here's my fee. And I'm going to, you know, I want you to pay them X number of dollars. I want you to pay me and we're going to re-promote it. We did that and they said yes. So I reused that old content from back when, when they only gave me two quarts of paint. And three years later, I was able to re-promote that, pro that popular project and get them to pay me. So I've, and I've worked with them in various ways. Um, in the last few months, um, since September, I've done several home shows. You know, a lot of times you can go to like, um, we've got them here in the Washington, I'm in the Washington DC area, but you know, we, we have home shows that take place and you know, all these vendors come out and sell anything that you would need for your home right? Any sort of home improvement uh, materials or, or things. And I've had these companies pay me to, to speak at home shows. And, you know, within a matter of a weekend doing maybe three or four on stage presentations, I can earn $2,500 from doing presentations and using their products hmm. during the presentation. So, so, so my, what I'm trying to say is, you know, you don't necessarily want to work for free, but don't, don't automatically say no. You know, you may read an article that says, Hey, you know, as a freelancer or as a blogger, you deserve to be paid. Don't, you know, don't you dare accept it because you're ruining it for everybody else. But it's also creating, you know, if you do great work, you know, for me, I, if I don't, if I get paid, let's say I get paid $300 for a post as opposed to $800 for a post, which is kind of where my, um, 
you know, my, my fee is. I do the same type of work. I don't give less on a $300 post than I do for an 800. I put as great of quality into the post because that's just what I produce. And companies see that. And when you go back to a company and say, hey, remember when we worked together last year? Um, I just want to let you know this this project has been, you know, has had 50,000 page views and it's been pinned 3,000 times. I would love to, to do this other project with you. Here's my fee. Would you be interested? So I think by following up, you're, you're creating this, uh, this relationship with these brands and you're showing them where their money went. And if you can, you know, if you've got the numbers to back it up, you know, go ahead and instead of $300, next time say 500 you know, maybe the project does even better. Maybe next time, say 700, test the limits a little and see where, how far you can go. And, um, just be creative. A lot of times companies, they don't know how to work with you, but if you come to them with some examples and say, Hey, I really want to do like this campaign with you and I'm going to get five bloggers and we're going to, we're going to post on social media. We're all going to do posts. We're going to, you know, brands love that. They love you coming with creative ideas. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's a lot of information. I could talk all day about this. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm passionate about it. <laughs> thanks, thanks for sharing this, Rina. This is very interesting. And I, I hope it's going to give some inspiration to some people listening. And mm-hmm. it would help them approach brands that they want to work with, actually. Mm-hmm. And what you explain here is another interesting thing that I kind of got from it is that let's say that you do, uh, you know, usually charge eight hundred dollars per, per post, mm-hmm. and you're working with this company that they offer you only three hundred, and they only offer you three hundred because they're a cheap company and they don't want to spend any more, right? Mm-hmm. So they got a really amazing piece of content. They got a lot of nice traffic. They it only cost them three hundred dollars, and you approach them again with a higher fee, and they don't want to work with you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this is like, well, it's okay because you don't want to work with that kind of company anyway <laughs> because right. they, they don't understand the actual value that they got from it. However, right. you still got paid a little bit. What's more more important that you got another piece of great content on your own yes. blog, which, yes. you know, will help you for many years to come. Like you said, your most most popular blog post is three years old and it's still generating... Right. Uh, lo- loads of traffic to your website. Yep. So, yep. yeah. <laughs> well, well, another thing, you know, another thing too, um, you know, if the company, let's say it's been six months or a year, you know, let's say the company says, yeah, you know, we just really don't have it in our budget. You know, what you can do, uh, and I, sometimes you might want to be upfront with this when you're working with a company because, Um, And it can be a selling point too. You know, one thing that I mentioned to companies when I'm working with them is, um, you know, yeah, you think maybe you think $800 is too much, but this post is going to live forever on my blog. This link, you know, I can choose to make this only, let's say a six month link. Maybe I only have your link in there for six months. And then maybe I put my affiliate link in there for Amazon. Um, But, you know, this can be a selling point is, you know, it's this content. I've had content that's three years old and it's still generating traffic. It's still quality content that I will go back and, and put back into my pin scheduler so that it's constantly being, being shared. So, you know, these are all the things that you have to point out to a brand when you offer to, you know, if you are uncomfortable with saying $800 or whatever that fee is, you know, you've got to lay out for them what they're getting. You know, this is something that's going to live forever. You know, I will give you a lifetime link. So I will always keep your link in there. I'm not going to take it out or change it to, you know, an affiliate link or whatever. Um, You know, I will uh, maybe I'll do a YouTube video. You know, maybe you don't maybe you don't have any experience doing video, but you could even do a slideshow. And, you know, you know that YouTube is like the second biggest uh, search engine. So, you know, yes, I'll put my link, I'll put your link in the description. Um, there's a lot of ways to sell your content. And if a company comes back to you and there's been times when companies have said, no, you know, the most I can do is 150 or 200. No, thank you. I I can't do it at this time. You know, let me know if you have a budget. Um, because you also don't want to totally underprice yourself. Like if you know that you can do really good work, um, you know, you don't necessarily want to undersell yourself, but sometimes like if it's a company that you know you'd like to work with for the long term, maybe you take 300 
because then you're opening up the, the communication for that relationship to happen. You know, like with Ryobi, if I had said to them, you know, how dare you offer me a free tool for my post? You know, I'm more than that. Well, I probably never would have developed the relationship the relationship that I did with them. So you have to look at the company too and make sure it's it's a company, but just some random company that contacts you and says, hey, we'd like you to do all this stuff for 300. And you're like, I don't know who you are. You know, you just have to take it on a case by case basis. Yeah, that makes a lot of mm-hmm. sense. <laughs> yes, definitely. Thanks for sharing that. And Serena, sure. I'd like to go back to to your blog. Something you mentioned earlier is that your blog is very personal, as in, you know, it's DIY, it's how to decorate, how to fix furniture, yet mm-hmm. you do talk about your family and, you know, your your personal life on your, on your blog. Mm-hmm. Why have you decided to go that route and how do you think it affected your uh, your blog and the growth of your blog? Oh, you have such good questions, Alex. <laughs> Thank you. This is... No, seriously, this is a really good question. Um, and honestly, I don't even know the answer. No, I think I know the answer to that. It, it, I mean, it's something that I think about a lot. Um, you know, sometimes I'll get emails from people saying, you know, hey, do you accept guest posts? And part of me wants to say, yes, I do. Because you know how, how it is when you become so busy, you're just one person running a blog. I mean, I've got a virtual assistant that helps with Pinterest stuff now, but I'm still, you know, I still consider myself one person who's creating the content. Um, you know, it would be nice to accept a guest post. And when I have allowed people to send me a sample, it's something that I could go to any old website and look at, you know, it could be like how to update your floor. You know, flooring is very popular, you know, it just sounds so robotic and that's just not me. Like I have to give you a piece of me in all of my writing. And I think the, I, I've just, I've always written this way from the very beginning to, to now I've just always written that way because it's just, it's just who I am. I don't want to create like, uh, what do you call like, a some, some, some generic site where it's all about the project, you know, today in today's post, I'm going to teach you how to, uh, rip out your vanity. Step one, do this step two, you know, I just don't want to do that because I feel like people can get a glimpse of me. I want people to know who I am and where I'm coming from with all of this. I want it to be very down to earth. Um, you know, I want you to, to look at that and say, Oh, that has Serena all over it. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's my preference. I I think it probably has affected my site in some way because I think, and, and, you know, right now with Pinterest, I mean, Pinterest is huge. People are bypassing Google to go straight to Pinterest to look for information Mm -hmm. and project ideas. And, you know, when you go to my site, yeah, a lot of times you, you can't just find the answer right away. (laughs) That's a bad thing to say. Um, you know, I'm going to give you a long introduction and kind of give you the whole story. Like I I tell stories on my blog. I'm a storyteller Mm -hmm. and each project is its own story. I'm not going to, and you have to sort of, you have to read through the story sometimes to get the knowledge. And I try to break it out so that it's not like one long paragraph, but you know, a lot of times my blog posts can be 1500 to 2000 words for a tutorial. And I will put 30, sometimes 40 pictures in one long post. Yeah. And it's crazy. And it's crazy. And and I've even asked people before, like, you know, in surveys, is it too much? And people are like, nope, it's just right. And so I, I stick with that. And, you know, I haven't had, um, I mean, I've, I've been able to replace my income from when I lost my day job almost two years ago. I mean, I've been able to replace my income. I still have people subscribe and have companies that want to work with me. And so it's whatever I'm doing, it's working and it's been good enough for me. Um, I just want my site to have that unique touch um, where when you come to my site, you see me and you know, it's my information. And that's why I haven't ever accepted guest post guest posters, because I don't want someone who's just going to come with an article that they could post on anyone's site. If someone were to come to me and say, you know, Hey, I blog over at this site. I really want to guest post. And they've got, writing that's just kind of similar to mine where you just, you laugh and you're like, Oh my gosh, she's crazy. Okay. Yes, girl, come and post on my site 
and I want that exact style. Like you've got to have personality because I think people aren't just coming. Some people come for information, you know, if they find you in Google, maybe they're trying to find, um, you know, how to, one of my posts that, that do really well in Google, Google search and search engines is how to uh, replace and install a mailbox or something. But even then, even if you look at that, there's still humor in there. There's still a little bit of me. Um, but you know, it's, it's not necessarily, um, just all step by step. Yeah. 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 And that makes a lot of sense, especially, for the kind of website you're doing. Because personally, if let's say I need to fix a cabinet and my only question is what kind of screws do I need to get for wood, right? That's what I'm gonna Google. Right. And, and all I want is a quick answer or preferably not even an answer, just a picture of the screws or the name. So I could go right. to the store and buy those screws. But if I'm looking for an inspiration for a project like restoring an old cabinet, then personally, I'm also the kind of person that would that would rather spend uh, 20 minutes reading through the longest blog post ever <laughs> with right. a lot of pictures. But I get all that information, and that's exactly what I'm looking for at that moment. This is why, uh, you know, right. I, I would prefer your blog over to a how-to article or how to just a quick quick description of the exact piece or screw or whatever that I need, right? Right. And, and, you know, I'm also, you know, and I'm also thinking of that, you know, uh, sometime last year, the beginning of last year, when I was thinking about my blog and all the different kinds of people that are coming to the site, you know, people who may be coming from Google where they're just looking for uh, an answer, you know, I want to create, and I want to focus on this for 2017 is I want to create content where, you know, I've got those readers who love my story. My, you know, I, I tell the story of a project, but you know, maybe I offer, uh, a PDF download of step by step where it doesn't have all the extra stuff about, Oh my gosh, I went to the store and you'll never believe what happened. Oh, by the way, step one, here's how you do, you know, just to have that, that option for everybody who could be finding that, whether it's the video tutorial that, that you see first thing when they click on the link, um, you know, whether it's the, uh, infographic that's at the bottom, just something for everyone that could find that content so that, Everybody has something, you know, it's, it's, it's got personality, but yet it's got, they can just find what they're looking for, you know, whether it's a, uh, master, uh, materials list that they can download so that, Oh, that's the kind of screw that I need. Oh, but by the way, here's this great story. Oh, she's so funny. Let me subscribe. Um, so that's, that's really kind of the goal that I do with my, with my content. And that's what I'm really trying to focus on, focus on for 2017 mm -hmm. to give something for everybody, you know? Yeah, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense for sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, Serena, you know, when I started the Extra Paycheck blog back in two thousand seven, mm -hmm. it was it was really uh, it was really bad because <laughs> one of the main things it was written like, "Oh, welcome to our website. We are, you know, blah blah blah." It was like I was trying right. to position position it as this big business corporation thing, yes. whatever. And I've kept that for quite a few years until I started realizing that, well, okay, you know, this might work for some people and they might think this is this big serious website. Right. Uh, but then that wasn't me. I was like, I'm not, I'm not feeling that way. I do like to put in right. a few jokes or stupid things some, from time mm -hmm. to time because that's how I am. And I started switching. I start, well, first of all, I switched everything from we to I because mm -hmm. most of the time it is only I working on the mm -hmm. blog. And then eventually when I started the podcast uh, almost two years ago, this is when I also started putting my pictures everywhere and kind of being, mm -hmm. well, I'm Alex. If you don't like my face for whatever reason, you know, just looking at my website, well, then don't come to my website but because I probably right. don't want you here if you're that kind of person. Exactly. Right? And, exactly. And yeah, and as I started being really like more personal and putting it like, look, that's not a corporation. That's actually, a you know, a small blog ran by someone, uh, right. by a real person. I, all the results skyrocketed for me because yep. I guess that's what people relate to, you know, not a big company. And uh, on being on the subject still, if you look at many... Uh, many big corporate websites and blogs, like multi-million dollar companies, mm -hmm. they're actually shifting to that as well. You know, they're when they're mm -hmm. starting a blog, it's not about the company anymore as and we are the company. 
it's actually right. their bloggers, their their staff who blog or bloggers who they hire. They actually mm-hmm. have their own voice and they're like, well, I'm Joe and yeah, I'm blogging for this company, but here's right. my story. Here's So I guess they're also figuring out that this personal touch might work a lot better than mm-hmm. showing yourself as this big, super big company, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what, no, that's really interesting to, to hear that bigger companies are doing that. I mean, I, I, I like that. That means we're doing something right. <laughs> Well, yeah, as as you said, I guess people are also getting tired of this generic content that could be posted on any blog and you wouldn't know the difference where it came from or why it's there. Uh, oh my gosh. I, yeah, I can tell you that I, I don't like to read that kind of content. For me, I have to, I have to hear the story. I have to know who you are. And, you know, and a lot of times too, I, I think, um, and this is one reason that I hate I hate Instagram and I'm going to go ahead and put it out there. I know Instagram is very popular because I feel like it's so curated. I'm, you know, I'm just tired of, of like these beautiful pictures. I, it's so crazy to say because I'm like a home DIY home improvement. I hate pretty pictures. I want to see the dirt. And I was just saying this on Facebook a couple weeks ago. I want to see the real stuff. Like show me the, 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 the dirt and the work that it took. How did it look before? You know, how did you go through this process? What's the story? Don't just show me this beautiful picture that looks like it belongs in HGTV magazine. Like I can't identify with that. And I think, you know, the people that gravitate to my blog are, they're the, they're the same way. Like, for example, I had posted, uh, I don't know if you've ever gone to one, but there's this thing that's done. I've never been to one. I, well, I've only been to one and it was recently. It's a design home. A lot of time, uh, a lot of times designers will get together and they'll decorate this home and they'll open it up to the public to come. And then they'll donate the proceeds to some charity, like a children's hospital or something. So I went recently and, um, I mean, it was a gorgeous home way out of my price range. Everything in there was super expensive, but my goal was to go there and get some decorating ideas and then take it back to my blog and say, you know, hey, 10 things that, 10 ways that you can decorate your home like designers. Here are 10 things that I learned. And one of my readers, she looked, she didn't even read the post. She looked at it, she opened it up and was like, basically told me I can't identify with this post because it's too pretty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, because people don't want to open it up and just see gorgeous homes and living rooms. I mean, some people don't. My readers don't. And I said, well, did you actually read the article? Because there's a lot of good information in there. Um, But those are, you know, a lot of times people just want to see the real stuff. At least I do. So, you know, I think by by being an individual and not just saying we this is we this is what we've done just saying look this is what i've done this is what the before looked like my home is a mess but guess what i did to make it look great and it looks normal you can do this too it gives people a confidence that they can aspire to be like you because you're just one person who's doing it and you're not like a team of people pulling this whole beautiful thing together that looks so unattainable Mm-hmm. Um, so it just makes it easier for people. So that's, that's kind of the way that I, that it's worked for me and I, you know, maybe I could be doing it differently. Maybe I could be doing it better. Um, but the style is what's, this is what I feel most comfortable doing. Mm-hmm. That, that makes sense. <laughs> that works mm-hmm. for you then. Great. Uh, Definitely. Uh, all right, Serena. So one of the last questions here. As we're ending this episode, what would be your biggest or more most important piece of advice for uh, beginner bloggers, for people who want to make, a, you know, a build a popular blog? What is that biggest thing that they should have, that they should pay attention to or that they should do? Mm, that's a really good one, and it's going to sound very generic and trite, but be yourself. Be yourself, and. This is a, some advice that I had heard a long time ago when I was just starting out this blog and was looking at popular blogs. I'm like, how are they doing it? Why is their site so good? And why are they getting all these comments? Be yourself and be down to earth. Be personable. Don't be afraid to show who you are, to show your faults, because people will gravitate towards that. And when they see you being real, they're going to feel comfortable. You know, um, One of the things people have said, and I don't know if you hear this too, some people say, oh, commenting on blogs is dead. Do you ever hear that, Alex? Yeah. Do you ever hear people saying that? Yeah. No, it's really not. When I post things, um, like let's say for example, projects, and I show people, hey, here's how this project, I could get maybe 50 comments from readers. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty good. 
And they, they comment because I'm a real person. So when you show yourself and you don't do like what you were trying to do at the beginning of extra paycheck, Mm -hmm. where you're trying to present yourself as this, you know, big, super important blog, just be yourself. Um, and people will respond to that. People will respond to that. Mm -hmm. And the rest, the rest just comes. The rest just comes. You learn as you go. Great advice, Serena. Thank you so much. And I sure. I agree with you. I think it helps not just your readers to kind of get a real feel of you because they know when you're faking it. They feel it. They oh, yes. smell it from a mile away. And second yep. of all, I think it just makes it a lot easier for yourself to produce the content the way you want it because you stop caring as in, you know, how should I be a proper blogger or a proper as in, right. I mean, um, uh, what... Like, how should I appeal to, to, to my audience in right. which way? This way you are, as you said, being yourself and you're writing yep. the way you like to write and people who like your kind of writing, they will stick around. People who don't, yes. they'll go away and that's fine because you want people yes. who are passionate about the way you write, about your content, about, exactly. you know, about your brand. Exactly. Yeah. All right, Serena. So thanks, thanks for sharing all of that. And uh, before you go, please tell us how could people either reach out to you or find out more about you, about your website. Where should they go? Sure. If anyone wants to check out my site, they can go to Thrift Diving. It's almost like dumpster diving, but thriftdiving.com. <laughs> and uh, I'm also on all the social medias with Thrift Diving, or they can email me at serena at thriftdiving.com. All right. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Serena, thank you thank for you. for sharing your experiences, your tips, um, and your advice. Thank you for being on the show. Sure. Thank you for having me. This was fun. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Extra Paycheck Podcast. As usual, I will be putting up show notes page at extrapodcast.com slash nine zero. This is where I'll be sharing resources, links, and other things mentioned in today's episode. Also, head over to extrapodcast.com slash iTunes. In order to subscribe to the show, please do leave a rating and a review as this will help the show tremendously. Thank you so much once again for tuning in and I'll talk to you next Monday.